So I'm at my local theater right now. I'm about to see uh, Tracy and Pedro Pets to the Rescue. And um, yeah, that's about what I expected. <laughs> oh, this is the uh, fourth movie I'm seeing in an empty movie theater. Oh boy, this should be something. Uh, well, anyway, here's the review. I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, man, sometimes I wonder why I do this to myself. I've been reviewing animated films for eight years, and I often wonder why I bother doing stuff like this. I mean... I should know better. I'm someone that graduated from film school, and this is what I'm doing with my life? Watching films like this? Ugh, man, I really am an embarrassment sometimes. Well, anyway. This is Gracie. Uh, revolting. This is Pedro. Yeah. This. Okay, so if you went to the theaters in the past month and saw The Wild Robot and or Transformers 1, you might have gotten a trailer for a film called Gracie and Pedro Pets to the Rescue. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at this thing and are probably going, what the hell is this? And believe me, I wish I knew, because, um... Yeah... I don't even know myself. I first heard of this film last month when one of my friends got the trailers for it in front of an advanced screening of Transformers 1, and I could just feel the shivers run down my spine when I saw this trailer for the first time. This thing terrified me. Like, it felt like this film was a horror movie villain that was beating down my door ready for its time to be reviewed, and I was just scared out of my mind awaiting its inevitable arrival. Because... God, I don't want to talk about this. I mean, do I have to? Do I really have to? I mean, it's October. It's nearly Halloween. We should be having fun here. Uh, oh, oh, you see that Illumination put out a new sing short on Netflix and the character saying Thriller? That, that, that was cute. Can we talk about that instead? Or, uh, Robot Dreams has a scene set during Halloween. Why not that? Do I have to talk about this? Seriously, do I have to talk about this? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to talk about this. I mean, you all clicked on the video. You all want to hear my thoughts on this, so... Uh, let's talk about it. So, yeah. This. Gracie and Pedro Pets to the Rescue. Ugh. If you can't tell, this was a film I was dreading watching, because that first trailer looked just absolutely abysmal, and it really seemed like it was going to be work. I mean, look at it. Just look at it. What even is this? And what was even more shocking to me is somehow this thing got a theatrical release, because... Nothing about it looked theatrical at all. It looked like the kind of animated film that would be dumped out on Netflix and forgotten a month. You know, like that animated Marmaduke film. This just didn't look like anything worthy of being released in theaters, and yeah, it looked absolutely terrible. Man, this trailer can't be all the advertising they did for this. I wonder if they did something other than that awful trailer. Okay, there's a merch store online. Let's see how much they're asking for for these products. Okay, there's a tapestry at $73 for that? $73. I... Uh, what? Okay, what else is there? All right, there's a Roblox campaign they're doing. Well, let's take a look at this. Ugh, yeah, this is about what I expected. Wow, this is even wait. Wait, go back to that theater. Did I just see that right? Movie trialer? 
They can't even spell trailer correctly. Even though there's a poster literally right next to it that spells the word correctly. How do you do that? Oh, wow. This is looking embarrassing. But anyway, I feel like we're wasting time. We have a film to talk about, and you know me. I want to give each film I see a fair chance, hoping that it would be better than it looks, since it's been proven good films can have some of the worst trailers, so maybe this could be tolerable? Maybe this won't be as bad as it looks. No, 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 it sucks. You know it sucks. You knew as you saw the trailer or saw that poster that it sucks, and I can confirm this thing really sucks. Look, you probably are not surprised that I'm saying this. I know you all clicked on this video to hear me say that an animated film called Gracie and Pedro Pets to the Rescue was horrendous. And yeah, I'll give it to you. It is horrendous. But my god, I did not know just how bad this was going to be. Look, I mean this with no exaggeration, no hyperbole, no facetiousness whatsoever. This is one of the worst animated films I have ever seen. I have seen some bad animated films throughout the eight years I have been doing this job, and this, quite frankly, is one of the lowest I have ever had the misfortune to watch. To say that this is a disaster would be an insult to disasters. It is just a flaming travesty. Okay, so what is it about? Well, it's about a dog named Gracie, played by Claire Allen, and a cat named Pedro, played by Cory Doran, and they fight and just don't get along. Then one day, their owners, the Bannister family, decides to move from L.A. to Salt Lake City for... reasons. And after getting into another fight in the pet carrier, which... Who pits their pets in the same pet carrier when flying? And also puts them in the cargo area. That just seems so freaking cr Ugh, I'm getting off track. Well, anyway, they get into another fight in the pet carrier, and soon the duo fall off the conveyor belt at LAX and end up missing the flight. And now they have to get back to their owners in Salt Lake while encountering other characters along the way while learning the importance of getting along. Yeah, that's the plot. Not a very complicated story. And not exactly the most original out there. But it doesn't seem completely awful, how bad could it be? Oh, my friends, you don't know. It gets quite bad because this story is just atrocious. This film's story is one of the most poorly told I have ever seen in an animated film. Honestly, this is a film that is stretching to make the 90 minute mark, and the way it gets there is incredibly lazy. Everything played out so conveniently that it doesn't really feel like the characters are put on an adventure that much, as much as they are rushed from place to place to almost like a video game character. I mean, here's what happens in the first act. After Gracie and Pedro are blown away by the plane, they then meet these two rats by the storm drain who steal their collars and tell them to see the monitor in order to get to Salt Lake, and then the two fight, still by the storm drain, and literally two minutes later, this giant lizard appears, and it turns out that he's the monitor, which... Why is a lizard called the monitor, and how does he know about where they need to go? This makes no sense. I'm getting off track. Anyway, this lizard tells them to take the bus to Salt Lake, which is conveniently pointing them to a bus in a parking lot, right next to the fence near the storm drain, and also tells them to beware the city of dreams known as Vegas, so naturally the two get on the wrong bus. Like, I cannot be this lazy if I tried. Would it have killed the filmmakers to have the characters move from place to place and then learn new information, rather than keep them in the same area, and are then told what to do? Like, is it really that hard? Yeah, most of the film is like this. And it's incredibly lazy. It doesn't help matters that nothing of value is really even learned during the set pieces. Like, when they get to Vegas, the duo get a fight in a penthouse in the Bellagio, and what do they learn from this? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Yeah, they don't seem to learn anything until the third act of the film, when they conveniently have to stop fighting. And I'm sorry, what film is like this? No, scratch that. What story is like this?
When crafting a story and making each scene, you need to make sure your characters are growing within each set piece and taking away something new. Like, the point of each story is to take a weak character and have them grow into a strong one by the end, and their journey has them learning about themselves each step of the way. This film doesn't seem to understand that. It thinks set pieces need to happen for the sake of it, and then they need to learn something. Like, how can you be this lazy? I should also mention the editing is atrocious. The film constantly fades to black with each scene ending, and it starts off on a new scene immediately thereafter, even if the film doesn't really change locations or places. But is the humor funny at least? No. No, it's not. At all. The comedy is really lowbrow. Like, there's a handful of vomit jokes in this, the slapstick is horrendous, and it's not even funny in a silly way. Like, I didn't even talk about the fact that there's a subplot in this film where the two kids that own Gracie and Pedro decide to make a diss track towards the airline that lost their pets because they're so upset and want to find them. Yeah, I can't make this up. Is this supposed to be entertaining and funny? Because it's not. At all. And oh yeah, did I mention this film had three writers? And apparently one of them worked as a real estate agent for 20 years before becoming a screenwriter? Uh... How? So yeah, the story is a disaster, but is the animation good at least? Do I need an answer? I mean, look at it. Just... Look at it. This is inexcusable. I cannot begin to tell you how bad this film looked because this looked really amateur. Everything about this looked off. The human models looked like plastic dolls and weren't even properly rendered correctly. I mean, you can see the hairline of the girl recede a little in the shots. That's terrible. And also, the animals looked even worse. They looked like fuzzy looking things and didn't move right. Like, the way the duo run is just... What is this? Are they running in a fish tank? Why does it look like this? And also, the environments look exceptionally dull and look nothing like their locations. Like, I don't think I've seen a duller-looking version of Las Vegas in my life. How can you make Vegas look that unexciting? And then there's the effects animation, which are just... the absolute worst. Like, the way the liquids moved looked wrong, almost as if they were jello. Pedro's smelly breath looked like it was coming out of his neck and not his mouth. And even when the characters were standing in windy environments, their fur doesn't react to it at all. I don't know what the budget was for this, but even if it was ridiculously low, there's no excuse for this. And speaking of things that have no excuse, the characters. Let's get to them. Gracie and Pedro are two of the most insufferable animated protagonists I have ever seen in a film. They are annoying as hell, they're not funny, and they're not even unique. Gracie is basically this stuck-up British stereotype, while Pedro has this sassy voice you would expect from a cat. Basically, all they do is fight with each other, and... That's it! Until they don't anymore, because, again, the character development in this film is non-existent. So not only do we not see them get to grow into better characters, we don't even really get to know them or their past. We're told Gracie was a show dog from London and Pedro was a stray, but that's it. Otherwise, there's just nothing to grasp onto or chew with these characters other than their annoying as hell voices. The Bannister family also isn't all that interesting. In fact, they're really stupid. When they get to Salt Lake, the parents actually make missing posters for their pets and put them up all around the city. You know, the animals they lost in L.A. And they're putting up missing posters in Salt Lake? A city that's 600 miles away? Ugh. Even the children are just stupid. Like, I mentioned the diss track they make, which I should add, the filmmakers don't know how electric guitars work because they think they make sounds that an acoustic guitar makes and also get louder when you turn down the knobs on them. And, again, the animation is just... Why? But, yeah, they don't even work as a way of showing good representation. Like, the younger brother communicates through a smartphone and sometimes communicates through sign language, but 
it's never properly explained whether this character was actually deaf or he was just mute. Like, it was such a half-hearted attempt to do a character like this. As much as I wasn't the biggest fan of Under the Boardwalk, I'll give it this, that I love the way it handled its deaf character. I thought that that was genuine and very well handled representation, and something that was really cool to see. Not here in this, though. This was just very lazy. And there's other animal characters in the film, too, but they don't do anything. Like, there's a fish played by Danny Trejo. Does he do anything? No. There's a rabbit played by Susan Sarandon. Does she do anything? No. I don't even know why they were in this. They did nothing. Were they just there to get celebrity actors to voice them? Th this makes no sense. And also, I should mention, there are villains as well chasing after the duo, and it's a stupid detective who looks like Dick Tracy, as well as his smarter pet ferret. And these two are so bad. And you're probably wondering, is there a reason why they're chasing after them? And yeah, there's a reason. And it's so stupid and incredibly lazy. Again, I cannot stress enough just how bad this writing is. It is absolutely awful. And I don't know if there was anything like this before. Wait. A film with a very ham-fisted message? Animation that's really lousy and amateur? Characters that are also astonishingly lazy and stupid? My god, this is it. I see it now. This is it. Everything all adds up and it's just a sight to behold. It's incredible. I just realized what this was trying to be. It's trying to be Norm of the North. Yeah, remember that movie? The film where Rob Schneider played a twerking polar bear who goes to a big city to stop condos from being built in the Arctic, and the people in the city are so stupid that they think that the polar bear is actually a guy in a costume. Remember that film? I do, despite my best efforts to block it out. And man, if there was a film that made me think back to Norm of the North, this had to be it. It really gives me no pleasure to compare something to a film with a twerking polar bear, but man, this did the trick. Then again, what did I expect from two directors who really have no idea what to do with animation, as one made the very bad Jackie Chan comedy, The Tuxedo, and the other director made... this. Yeah, this is something called Noodle and Bun and... I don't know what I'm looking at either, but I know it ain't good. And that's basically Gracie and Pedro pets to the rescue in a nutshell. It ain't good. This is everything an animated film should not be. The story is badly told and not funny in the slightest, the animation is really bad and looks amateur, and the characters are annoying as all get out and incredibly stupid or pointless. You probably were not going to see this thing anyway, but... Yeah, I can confirm this is one of the worst animated films I have ever seen in an absolute travesty of a film. Do not bother with this at all. And I mean don't. Instead, go watch Wild Robot. Transformers 1. Piece by piece. Look back. E even the new My Hero Academia film, just, just don't see this. And with that, I'm giving Gracie and Pedro pets to the rescue... A one. I mean, what else were you expecting? This genuinely might be one of the worst animated films of the decade so far, and I really am hoping we don't get anything this bad ever again. And while there are many good animated films worth exploring and watching, this is one that is beyond the point of rescue. Ugh, I need a drink. Oh, my Jedi, they don't make it. Oh.